Holy Spirit, God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hymn number 248, People Look East.
Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You see. First lesson today is from Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. A responsive reading from the 80th Psalm. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then he will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> Each morning, the seabird sang to the pebble, and each afternoon, 
the ocean breezes gently teased it. The pebble was warmed by the sun and bathed by the rain, and on clear nights it was dazzled by the stars. Sometimes a storm pounded the shore and the sea threw itself over the pebble. That was exciting, even a little frightening. Then the winds would die down and the sea would retreat, and the pebble would return to its small and round and nearly smooth life. But that pebble wanted more. If I were a boulder, the pebble said, I might be part of a stone wall or the foundation of a great building. You'll never be part of a stone wall or a building, the other rocks pointed out. You are too small for that. If I were a grain of sand, the pebble said, I could be shaped into a sandcastle or melted into a piece of glass for a fine window. Not in a million years, the other rocks said with a laugh. You're too big for that. And on and on, the, the pebble longed to be something that the pebble wasn't. And after a while, the pebble gave up trying to understand. Light was good, the sky was often a brilliant blue, and the air tasted of salt. Scuttling crabs tickled the pebble, and there was nothing so beautiful as the full moon dancing in the water. But that pebble still had that empty. And then one day, a boy came walking along the shore with his mother and father. And the boy had a good time at the beach. And when it was time to leave, the boy asked his parents to wait. I won't be long, to, he told them. I just need to find something. He wanted something that would remind him of the color of the sea. And so he picked up a piece of beach glass, but that wasn't right. Later, he found a, a white feather of a seagull but that wasn't quite what he had in mind. He found a, a shell, and he turned the shell over and over in his hands, wondering and considering. And that wasn't right. And then he saw that small, round, and nearly smooth stone that fit perfectly in his palm. And the boy knew at once. This will be my pocket friend, he said. It will remind me always of this wonderful day. And he called out to his mother and father, I found what I was looking for. The pebble felt the warmth of the boy's hand all around it. It glowed with delight as the boy ran his finger over the pebble's smallness and roundness and nearly smoothness. The pebble, too, knew at once. And I have found what I was looking for. We are like that pebble. Jesus has found us, and we were just what he was looking for. And we found him, and he is what, just what we are looking for in life as well. Amen.